Hey, what's going on peeps? It's Will Mydell with Creative Core and today we're going to be talking about Color Effects Pro. Let's get to it. Alright, so in today's tutorial I want to talk about um, some plugins. One of my favorites is by Nick Software. Nick, I already call it Nick Collection, Nick Software. Either one goes. But uh, it's been out for a while. Um, I think Google bought it out last year or year before last. And it's free. It wasn't free at one point, but it's free. It's available now. And um, I know for sure they're working on another update, which will be released in mid-2018, uh, sometime this year. But um, the older version is still available. There are seven different plugins inside this whole collection. But today we're just going to be covering the Color Effects Pro part of that plugin. All right, let's dive straight in and let me show you guys what's remarkable about this plugin and how it can help you with your images. All right. All right, so we have this image of uh, a guy I used to work out with named Ray, a uh, cool guy. And uh, he does a lot of running, does a lot of workouts. And uh, I was doing um, some promotion at one point for fitness photo shoots. And I thought he would be an ideal guy uh, to use as a test subject or as a muse, but I won't call him test subject. He's not like a, a mouse or something in a cage or whatever. Anyway, talking off the side of my neck. What you wanna do, uh, once you download the plugin, it's very easy. Uh, you click on install and click okay and just go through the whole setup. Like you would download any application and set it up. And once it's installed into uh, your Photoshop and you have your image here open, you want to go up to filters and as you can see down here where it says Nick collection uh, you see the plugins that come with it like I say we're not going to cover every one we'll do that in another video we're just going to uh, cover color effects pro so once you click on that this box pops open okay it's loading the image and uh, I think we're going to start from left to right a uh, breakdown of what uh, how, how you use this, okay? And let me click off of this so we can start from scratch. That's the original image, all right? First of all, if you wanna uh, split the screen, as you can see, you can click on this to split the screen and it splits it up and down. The one in the middle is a left and right split, but you can't tell any difference now because we don't have any effects, uh, any filters applied to this image. So let's apply uh, a filter. Uh, you can click on the first one, black and white conversion. As you can see, it converts it to black and white. Once again, you can click on the split if you wanna see it that way, or you can go this way, or you can just keep it off. All right, over here on the right um, is where the strength is added. Each one of these uh, effects is gonna have a different sub setting, so uh, don't expect to see each one of these sub settings on every single uh, effect on this um, software. Uh, brightness and the contrast. All right, let's go to another one. By color filter. As you can see, you have different options. All you have to do is hover over the filter and it'll show you what the uh, effect looks like. That looks pretty cool. All right, got a green and a browns. Got the moss color. Let's pick one, let's go with this. You can blend it or you can have it stronger here in the middle. Uh, if you want to give it a vertical shift, as you can see the blues shifting into the yellows, or if you want the yellows to shift into the blues, or you could just rotate it all the way around. All right, uh, let's go to one of my favorites, which is detail extraction, which is the most commonly used. I know for any creative, you know, retoucher, they use this a lot. As you can see, uh, the detail. Another thing, this little button here, if you want to push out that, that side, you can see better. And uh, should be a zoom button on here somewhere. Here we go. And if you want a white background or dark. And let's push this to the side. Now let's zoom in right quick. So you can see the detail. Alright, let me bring this back out. Let's split the screen. All right. What detail extraction does, it actually brings out the detail in the image and it kind of creates this, I want to say grungy, but it, it, it's, it's kind of like a, a sharpener, 
Uh, if you see a lot of commercial style images, um, a lot of these guys use this, this this actual plugin right here. You can see the detail, like in a sweat on the right side, compared to uh, the left. You can see the detail pops out. See the skin is really soft. I mean, it holds up to its name, detail extraction. It extracts the details out of it. I mean, in certain images also where there's dark areas or dark shadows, it'll make whatever's in those shadows in that dark area pop out. You can see things that you couldn't see um, on the original image. And you can uh, you could crank the detail up, uh, add more contrast to it, to give it more pop. Uh, or add some saturation, desaturate it, however you want to do it. Uh, you can control the radius of it if you want it very, very, very fine or just a normal look. Or if you want to cover a large area, which will probably be like on images that's dealing with landscapes or um, anything with a wide range. But if you're doing most photos, I usually go with normal or fine. And I usually crank the, the contrast somewhere between like 14 and 25 and I, and I don't have the detail extractor that way up. It depends on the person also and whatever the image is you're working on. And what these little control control points are, which now these control points are on each one of these uh, effects over here. Because they let you control where you want the, the effect to be at. So if you just want the effect to be on a certain area, you could, you could uh, click on this plus sign and put it where you want. Say I want it just on his forehead. Now this little arrow right here controls the radius. As you can see it shrinks it in. It puts it just on that area. And this controls the opacity of how much you want it to be seen. That's how it drops down. You take the opacity all the way out. Opacity all the way out and I add it all the way in. See now, let me uh, take off the split screen. You can actually see uh, let me go back in. Is it 200%? All right. Uh, the before and after. If you click on the compare button, before, after, before, after, before, after. All right. Go back out at 100%. Now, if you uh, hold down the Alt button or Option, I think if it's Mac, you can click on it and drag it to another area. All right. And say for instance I want to cover his chin and all his neck you know I could just widen the area about right there probably bring it right there where the sweat is because I want the sweat to pop and probably just a little part right there where his nose is and bring that in about right there maybe I just want the sweat on his shoulder to pop and click on another control point put it right there See this whole back popped out. You just bring that in about right there. All right. Or let's say let's do this. Let's delete these. Let me show you what you can do. You can hit OK to bring it into Photoshop. All right. So let's zoom in. All right. You see the before and after. Another way you can do this is just create a mask, invert it, uh, get a soft brush, and put the opacity somewhere like around 14, depending on how you want, and just add the detail where you want it. All right, put that around the chin area. Maybe get some sweat popping up here. A little bit in the hair. right here pop in all that water that we sprayed on them because he couldn't have been working out where we were shooting at you know we had to spray him down all right let's see it before and after see the before and after all right bring that in with all that pop around the abs There we go. All right, so you can see before and after. Those, those details are popping in, right? All right, let's try one more thing.
okay so that's another thing I want to show you guys if you click on add filter you can add another filter on top of these you can stack these on top of each other I click on glamour glow and this will kind of soften the detail extraction so if the details a little too strong the glamour glow will kind of soften that image as a whole all right you can also save your recipe so if there's a certain type of style that, uh, that you create and you notice okay this is my style I'm gonna do this on the majority of my images you just click on save recipe and you name it and once you name it it'll be over here down here at the bottom where it says recipes the personal save ones like some like uh, some images I've already worked on with this guy named Benson uh, a guitar look a girl named Sarah a guy named Tad Money a birthday shot so you can see it because you might do a photo shoot with one person and you're working on like six or seven images for that person and after you've done your basic retouch for every single one of those six images you want to add your color effects pro on all of them but you want the same type of look on each one because say for instance you work on one image and you come in and color effects pro and you add two or three or four effects and then you go take a nap and come back to work on the second image and you want that same look but you, you forgot it's like man what effects did I put on there I don't remember well this is why you saved the recipe so you can come in there and uh and it'll, it'll add the exact same effect that you added on the first one okay and the history will only be saved I think for the day that you're ex for the day that you're actually working on it I, I don't think it's the history set up for like you take a nap and come back another day after the program's been shut down and you reopened it uh, the software has to stay open in order for the history to remember what you've been done what you've been doing so save your recipes and uh, if you want some reference they have you know over here uh, their referred or their uh, preference to what uh, effects will go on like landscape or wet images architecture nature or portraits and travel so they have their preferences you can try those out or you can just create your own okay and they have the brush tool down here also which will basically just did what I just showed you a few minutes ago with the mask and you could go in there and mask out the image according to um, mask out the effect on top of the original image because it's always going to create a layer on top of the original layer after you exit out of the of the uh, software so every time you finish with Nick software and you hit OK and exit out it's going to create a brand new layer on top of the original layer it's not going to do it to the original layer so that's Color Effects Pro. It's a very helpful tool. Um, so many different uh, effects in just that one plugin. And we haven't covered every plugin inside of Nick's collection, but in, just in that collection alone, uh, you can really you know increase the looks and style of your images. Okay. All right. So that's it. My name is Will Mydell. I will see you guys later on the next video where uh, we might talk about some stuff with Premiere and Design. I don't know. But don't forget to subscribe. I thank you guys for looking at the video. Tell your friends. Like if you like the video. Drop a comment. And I'll see you guys later, okay? Don't forget to follow my Instagram.